Stempoint Capital CIO and managing partner Michelle Ross with me here post nine to discuss. Happy New Year. Nice to see you. Happy New Year. Nice to see you as well. All right. So is this bounce believable? Because it's been a rough stretch of a two years plus. Absolutely. And what we are seeing is clearly there was a macro tilt to this. We have inversely correlated from the 10 year. And as yields had gone up, we were under pressure. As they came down, biotech definitely made that move. But I really want to be clear. There are fundamentals that are at work here that are making this longer term in nature, in our opinion. And we actually believe we've seen the lows last year. Tell us some of the year. fundamentals that, that lead you to believe that. Yeah, so obviously we're very focused on the science and the scientific advancement we've seen, the clinical trial data, it could be a meaningful impact to patients and ultimately change the standard of care for a number of different conditions. And the second, the very big one, was m and and is m and It's been something that is a key piece of our sector and had been kind of frosty and frozen there for a few years. And it was one of those effects. It was kind of slowly and then mm -hmm. suddenly all at once it did show up in, in Q4 in a big yeah, way. Th thank you, Bristol Myers, mm -hmm. right, which, go, which went on a spending spree. Yep. Um, and you expect more of that. Does, does that ball really get rolling out in, uh, at the healthcare conference out in San Francisco? Oh, it's a great question. And I think there is a little bit of a trepidation from my peers in the industry thinking that, did we just pull that forward? Did we pull forward some of these announcements? We had six deals in December. And as you mentioned, Bristol Myers doing two, Avvi doing two. It was something that really could have been the expectation for that conference. So I, I don't want to say that by any means I'm making a statement on that conference and timing, but I would anticipate 2024 has more in store. So what's your assessment of the weight loss craze? <laughs> um, by now, the story is well known for the stocks that have been bought as a result. Novo, Lilly, you know, and maybe one or two others. Is that played out? Does it still have legs? How am I supposed to think about that as an investor when all I've been hearing about is this class of drugs? Yeah, I think it is a tremendous market opportunity. I think what Lilly and Novo have done in, in truly creating something that peak uh, potential is in the hundreds of billions of dollars. I mean, that is staggering and something that, you know, we we do look at as what is going to happen in the evolution of this. Now, for us and what I would state, is there going to be next generation and additional compounds that can truly allow this to grow to a larger degree, meaning taking this to an oral pill? That would be the next generation or looking at ways to change the side effect profile or augment it to prevent some of the, you know, side effects that people are seeing right now. Are there other companies that I need to keep my eye on as a result of what you're talking about? Yeah, I, I would say that one in particular that we focused on is a company called Keros. And Keros does look at the opportunity to prevent some of the salvage of muscle. So muscle wasting that people have commented on in the past. Could you look at this as something to augment as well as a number of other companies looking at the oral aspects of uh, being able to bring this as uh, an oral product in the future. You own this name? We do. You do. Um, other names that you brought that, that we, I don't think I've ever talked about before, maybe we have, and I just don't remember. Syndax is one? Syndax. What do they do? Syndax is, uh, uh, had a wonderful uh, year end in 2023, and that was on the back of two very important data sets that it presented at medical conference in December. And the reason it's so important is these are late stage uh, clinical trials that were successful. They are now with the FDA for approval, and they're both in the oncology indication. They're areas of unmet medical need. This will have a massive improvement for patients going forward, and we think the market is, is primed for them and what they're going to be able to do. All right. We'll keep our eye on that one, uh, ticking higher by about 2%. What about Cavaletta? Yeah. Cavaletta, as a, as a scientist by training, it really makes me excited what Cavaletta is working on and doing. They are looking at something called cell therapy, something we've been familiar with in the oncology, in the cancer setting. They're taking that now to the autoimmune setting. So very hard to treat conditions where the immune system is, is at the core, at the center of this. They are resetting the immune system and recharging our T cells in our body to basically have phenomenal results. Caboletta is one of a handful of public companies doing this. Very exciting year ahead for them. What about election year politics, which in a general election year is typically not good? 
for yeah. health care because both sides are just teeing off on the on the drug companies. How should yeah. I think about that? No, it is a very important point. Uh, we have typically looked at and seen different things happen uh, going into an election year. It has becomes a very bipartisan issue. The rhetoric does increase. I would say, though, there was a win that Biden can claim from this year, which was through the Inflation Reduction Act. He did put into place an attempt to lower drug pricing over the next few years. Now, that could be looked at as a win on his side and something that is not going to come out as what could continue to be done for this class going forward. So I think time will tell. It is obviously part of the volatility that we experience consistently looking at this space.